Today on Commander Replay, we're back with some more Four Color Siege Rhino and find out what happens when we have to lay it all on the line, next on Commander Replay. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Welcome back everyone, playing some more Four Color Arbitrary Rhinos, and uh, take a look at this opening hand, we've got three lands, we've got some ramp. And we've got some removal and Strionic Resonator. I like this one. The only thing we're missing is a tutor for our hidden commander, which is Siege Rhino today. And today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter and GoFundMe donor Tyler. And we draw into some green black mana right there. That seems like it's pretty good. We do need to enchant a forest. So I guess we'll play the Overgrown Tomb untapped. Play the Utopia Sprawl on the Overgrown Tomb. Oh, we need to choose a color, do we? We've got a lot of green, black. We've got a white source, got a white source, got a green source, got a green source. How much blue does this deck actually need? I'm not sure. Let's see if there's any double blue in the deck. There is some double blue in the deck, and we've got one triple white. I think the triple white will be okay, so we'll go for a second blue right here. And actually, we can get uh, Thrasios in next turn, which would probably be a pretty good idea. So I did make a couple changes to the deck between rounds. Uh, I cut some of the things like Raise Dead, uh, Noxious Revival, those sort of like bring things back into your hand type of effects. Because when you're talking about a creature, with a creature you can just reanimate it or animate dead it and just, you know, for roughly the same mana, just put it right back into play and not have to deal with the mana cost of, you know, bringing it back to the hand and then doing it. So I cut some of those, plus the fact that Ravos itself is like animate dead from your command zone. So that doesn't seem like a place you need to be super redundant. Ended up getting some more removal into the deck instead. We've got this Etherize and we've got this Wrath of God. Uh, also added an Hour of Revelation, um, since this deck didn't seem to be too heavy on artifacts and enchantments. So uh, now we can actually interact with our opponents better and hopefully not get run over by this Balan again. And Balan starts off with the Colossus Hammer. Yep, we know how that went last time. Like I said, I think that's a really big pickup for the Balan deck, so... Opponent's gonna lay down a Ramping Growth, get themselves some Ramping, and with all that, that'll bring it back to our turn. There's a Savannah. If we play the... Actually, I think we can get Thrasios right here. Let's get Thrasios. Thrasios into play. Uh, I guess we play a Marsh Flats. Crack a Marsh Flats. We've got triple white mana sources in hand. That is good news. Maybe get some more black and some blue. How much... We've got plenty of green. So yeah, Watery Grave seems like the right choice right here. No need to pay the life and we will pass the turn. Right now we're probably just on the uh, activate Thrasios plan, uh, try to find a way into a tutor to get our creature. Taking a look at what our opponents are playing today, first up we have Lord of the Board piloting Joda Archmage Eternal. Don't really know what they're up to today, five color deck, could be anything, uh, but you can always assume probably something big, uh, so we need to watch out for that. Next up, we have Dave piloting Balan Wandering Knight. If you're wondering how strong a Balan deck can be, uh, in the last game we saw a pretty good example of what it can do with some fast mana. So if you can get some mana rocks out there, you can have Balan with some equipments into play very quickly. And then finally, we have Champion Nathun once again piloting Kaneos and Tiro of Miletus. We do want to be careful. Uh, we know about the Glacial Crevasses tech that they're running, so they can prevent a lot of damage. Although I do believe Siege Rhino is life loss, so maybe if we're copying that infinitely, maybe not so big of a deal, but certainly problematic for combat. Here comes Stoneforge Mystic. Let's see what Dave's going for. A lot of choices in that deck when you've got like 20, 25 equipments to choose from. Goes for the Argentum Armor. Straight for the Argentum Armor, huh? And there's a Mox Amber. Yep, that one does require a legendary creature, so not so helpful yet. When I was playing Akirian Bruce, that one's really good in Akirian Bruce because your commander is two mana and it's super easy to get into play. Uh, when you're talking about a four, four mana commander, maybe not quite as good, but still something to look at. It's at least a card to consider. So here comes KT. I'm down for some card draw right here. Or do we want the ramp? Uh, I think I'll take the ramp, actually. We'll drop the Temple Guard in and let that come in tapped. So bring it back to our turn. Uh, we draw a Karmic Guide. Not helpful yet. Play Savannah. And. We're on five mana currently. Definitely need to activate Thrasios. That's a thing that we need to do. Uh, so we'll probably just pass. I think we're just going to pass with our mana open right here. And activate Thrasios at the end step. Make sure we don't need to etherize anything. Here comes Sky Shroud Claim for the Jota. Yep, there's some mana ramp for them. Here comes that Argentum Armor. Yup, that's a card worth shooting. Here comes Tatiova. Yep. We're just going to play a land, get a life, and draw a card. Uh, we're going to activate Thrasios. It's an austere command. Definitely put that on top of our library. I think we can wait one one or two more turns on the Austere Command. Dave's on four mana right now. He, next turn, he could cast Balan. He'd be on five mana. 
Uh, even with the fast rock, he could Balan and equip. He still won't have haste. I don't see any world. Oh, uh, maybe Mana Vault. Mana Vault, boots, haste could be a problem. So I think we can wait one or two more turns on the Austere Command. We'll hang on to that for a second. Uh, in the meantime, we have this K&T trigger. Trying to decide between the ramp and the card draw. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the card draw right here. We draw an Eternal Witness and an Asceticism. Play the planes. Six. We've got six mana total. Don't want to run the Strionic Resonator down there because we're definitely going to have to blow up artifacts. Uh, Balan is a big creature. These are big creatures, so we don't want to cast Ravos either. I think that means the plans should either be Thrasios or Asceticism. I think I like the Asceticism right here. And Joda's going to pass with seven open mana. Always suspicious. Here comes Balan. Yup. And Dave's going to tap out and pass. Here's a Thought and Glaciers for the K&T. Going to do the Thought and Glaciers thing. Here comes a Signet for the K&T opponent. And step K&T trigger. No lands for us. Going to have to take the card draw. It's a right of replication. Not mine having my own Tatiova, but we probably need to blow the board up also. That'll bring it back to our turn. There's a Bountiful Promenade. Is good. I was hoping to make this land drop right here. First thing we're going to do is attack into the Joda and see if we can bait out the Cyclonic Rift. That did not work. It did not bait out the Cyclonic Rift. What do we do now? Uh, I would really hope to not get bounced at the end step. We will have to discard the hand size if we do. We've got seven mana available currently. I think we try this Strionic Resonator... Then sit on Aetherize or Thrasios as needed. Oh, that was weird. I was totally expecting the Rift right there. There's a Wrath of God. I'm okay with this. There's a Boros Charm, indestructible for the K&T and Tatiova. Uh, okay, and we will activate our Thrasios. That's a survival of the fittest. Uh, that is a card that we do need. Do need to tutor up our creatures, put that on top of our library. I think I'm going to send Thrasios to the graveyard and just pull it back with Karmic Guide at some point. Yeah, does that make sense? No, because it's still only four mana. We'll send it to the command zone. So everything except K and T's creatures getting blown up. Here comes open the armory. Yep. This is where you probably want to get something with haste. No, yeah, going dark steel plate doesn't want to deal with more removal. Is relevant against austere command and wrath of god. Not so much against ether eyes, but oop, that's an Azusa. That's a good one. Hey, here's a birds of paradise. Tatiova and K and T into the Balan opponent. Down to thirty four they go. Nature's lore. Here comes a Wayward Swordtooth. Ooh. Really tempting me to fire down the Wrath of God right now. And there's a K and T end step trigger. No lands for us. More card draw. So we get an extra land. We get a high market. And this is another thing I added to the deck because of the presence of Gift of Immortality. Uh, if you put Gift of Immortality on Siege Rhino and then you have a high market, you can repeatedly sacrifice it and uh, keep getting it back. It's a fun little trick I've done in some mono white decks in the past. Uh, so I've been thinking about the Austere Command versus the Wrath of God. Austere Command, we can't hit the artifacts and all of the creatures. Right now, I do want to hit all of the creatures. So I think we're going to fire down the Wrath of God, get the High Market into play. Play the Wrath of God. Here comes Teferi's Protection. Well, better to use it now instead of, like, when we're in a position where we could die as a result of them playing it. Opponent got a Counterspell? They do. Uh, no. Copy target or instant or sorcery. You may choose new targets for the copy. Oh, okay. They can They can copy our Wrath. And get them before they phase out. All right, all right, I'm down for that. So opponent getting their board wiped as well. Slow down that mana production because they are getting a little wild over there. Uh, the next step is to play this Survival of the Fittest. And we can cycle a few creatures. We will wait to do that. I don't know if there's any other creatures we need in our graveyard per se. Oh, that's a Mind's Dilation. That card is scary. You know, I really don't want to have to hit enchantments with the Austere Command, but we might. Ugh, I don't know, that'd be... Mine's Dilation is really good, but we'd lose a lot if we have to blow up enchantments. Uh, getting the... Whatcha call it? I can never remember this guy's name. Reclamation Sage, that's the one. Uh, getting the Reclamation Sage might be a good idea. Ooh, could we go something like... With seven mana, we could get two triggers off the Karmic Guide? So we have enough mana to do that. So we could ditch... We could put Eternal Witness and Siege Rhino into the graveyard. And then pull two of them out with Karmic Guide? I like the way that sounds. Or maybe we go, yeah, maybe we go Eternal Witness and the Reclamation Sage. Because I think we really need to get rid of the Mind's Dilation. Siege Rhino can wait for a second. Oh! Mind's Dilation hit a Generous Gift, which is going to blow up the Argentum Armor. All right, that uh, Argentum Armor threat down. Yep, Mind's Dilation. Pretty good. That should hopefully stir up some bad blood over there. Opponent can activate their Thawing Glaciers. 
keep those land drops coming. Yeah, Thawing Glacier is really good when you're playing extra lands a turn, like they were before we blew up their stuff. Here comes Erratic Portal. Weird. That is an interesting card. Can either be super annoying or you can bounce your own things with it. And nope, Dave's got mana open on the Mox Amber. Oh, that's a season's past. Well, we're probably going to be needing this austere command. This makes me nervous right here. This could be a counterspell. We're going to play a Wayward Swordtooth. Yep, it is back after the season's past. And at the end step here, we're going to start using the Survival of the Fittest. So ditch the Eternal Witness. Search for a Reclamation Sage. Discard the Reclamation Sage. Get a Siege Rhino. Thawing Glaciers will return. There's a Finale Devastation. Could be helpful. Uh, play the Sun Petal Grove. Play Karmic Guide. Mine's Dilation Triggers. Hopefully this doesn't hit anything too important. Sakura Tribe Elder. Could be worse. Could be worse. Karmic Guide will trigger. Get the Reclamation Sage. Copy the Karmic Guide trigger. Uh, get Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness, get back the Marsh Flats. Really want to keep making those land drops. Thought about the Wrath of God, but we still got removal in hand. So I think we'll be okay right there. Use the ability. Use the Karma Guide's ability. Get the Reclamation Sage. Blow up the Mines Dilation. Opponent's going to crack a fetch. Yep. Ooh, opponent's going to Assassin's Trophy our Asceticism. Uh, that gets us a land on tap, which I think means we can Aetherize should we get attacked. Use the Assassin's Trophy ability. Let's get an Island. Oh yeah, that comes into play untapped. And with the Marsh Flats, I was worried about that, because now if Balan tries to attack us, we can just bounce it. And that seems like a good place to be. Use the Rex Age ability. Play the Marsh Flats. Oh, we already, did we already play a land? Oh, we must have already played a land. Oh, that's not good. When do we play a land? So we need to keep Balan off of Evasion. Evasion uh, means they can kill a player. Here comes Marike. Ooh, yeah. Might be slow on this Balan, though. So they can give it haste. Yep, here comes the evasion. Luxodon Warhammer. So, Marike is terrifying to a Balan player, so hopefully Dave goes that way. Oh, that's a Mask of Avacyn. All right, less terrifying. Less terrifying. Pay the two, get everything equipped. Let's see where he's going. It's got 17 Double Strike, Lifelink, and a Trample. Going over to the Jota opponent, see if they've got any answers. They do not, and they go down to Commander Damage, 34 Commander Damage. Here comes Teamer Ascendancy. That's a good one. Uh, don't think we need a survival for anything at the moment, so... So let the turn come back to us. Not going to pay the echo cost on Karmic Guide. Going to let it go, because we are going to austere command anyway. Opponent's going to erratic portal our Reclamation Sage. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll just let that happen. We draw a Windswept Heath. Play the Marsh Flats. Play the austere command. We're going to go big creatures and artifacts. Oh, good. Opponent's responding. I forgot we should have used the Strionic Resonator first. Opponent's going to Boros Charm again. I forgot they got that back. So we're going to crack our Marsh Flats. Oh, do we need to hold priority on that? I guess we needed to hold priority on that. Get a Scrubland. Whoops. Well, down that goes. Oh, uh, yeah, Dark Steel Plate's still indestructible, and so is Balin. Forgot about that. Whoops. Uh, Aetherize, still a good card. May need to sit on that. How much mana do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five mana open. Um, Do I think Balin can just kill us? Blackblade, Reforge, and Stratoscythe would be probably the next biggest power. Enhancers, also Ogre's Blade. Ogre would be plus five, so that's eight double strike. We can survive that. Uh, Blackblade would be six, that would be plus nine. That one's really close. Uh, if they make another land drop, it would be ten total. We'd be really close. I think we can get the Rhino in this turn safely. Seen Rhino in, get opponents for three. We will gain three. Yep, here comes that seventh land. Okay. Here's a Sword of Fire Nice. Green creatures on board, not super relevant yet. Here's Trailblazer Boots. Now it is. Attach everything to Balan. Yep, let's find out where Balan's going. It's got 5-5 five, five Double Strike with two Sword Triggers. Assuming it gets through. It's going to come our way. Okay. Uh, Non-basic Land Walk. We cannot block that. Ooh, that's an Evacuation. All right. Nice. So Balan getting bounced. Uh, the one thing that Mono White decks hate is facing Blue decks. Bounce is so, so bad for mono white you have to have teferi's protection or eerie interlude and if you're doing a voltron thing eerie's interlude is like fine but you still have to re-equip everything and that's not amazing uh balan does get around that much better than other commanders do but yeah mass bounce is such a big problem for mono white here comes wayward sword tooth and teamer ascendancy will trigger yep here comes tatiova yep here comes a Birds of Paradise. Opponent going to send two creatures over to the Balan. Yep, they're up to 64. They are on the throne. Down to 56 they go. 
Here's an Oracle of Moldiah. Ooh, I would love to copy one of those. In a privileged position on top of their library. Oh, my. Would not mind seeing a clone. Here's Pull from Eternity. Anything that we can part with? Like, all these creatures are really good. I don't really want to discard them. Teamer Ascendancy is a bit scary to me. So let's get the Rex Sage. Shoot Teamer Ascendancy. Get Seed Rhino back to play. Seed Rhino into play. Ding everyone for three again. Gain three life. Play land. We've got five total. That's in a, Do we need to etherize this turn? Probably not. Maybe we get Ravos. Yeah, let's get Ravos this turn. Get Ravos into play. And pass turn like that. Here comes Balan back to play. Yep. Comes land. Tap the oval will trigger Horizon Chimera on top. Whenever you draw a card, you gain a life. Whew. It's going to be a lot of life gain. Eternal Witness on top of their library. Here comes Privilege Position. Oh, that means we can't copy the Oracle of Moldiah anymore. Ah. May need to do Eternal Witness for the Austere Command at some point. Or just think about winning with the Siege Rhino. Oh, that's a Helm of the Host. Equip the Helm of the Host to the Tatiova. Here comes Bloom Tender. Yep. Helm of the Host trigger for our opponent. Yep. I'm going to send the Wayward Swordtooth over to the Balan. Uh, that'll probably get eaten by the Balan when he equips and blocks. Yep, here comes the block, and here comes the equip. Uh, going to Erratic Portal the Wayward Swordtooth. Okay. Oh, we tapped out last turn, by the way. Uh, okay, good. They use the Erratic Portal on Not Us. Uh, brings it back to our turn. Ravos is going to get a trigger. We'll get back our Karmic Guide. Seems helpful. We draw a Wild Growth. Ooh. A lot of options this turn. Don't know what to go for, per se. Like, I'm thinking, I think we're getting to a point where we need to stop thinking about value and start thinking about how we're going to finish it up. This will give our creatures plus X, plus X, haste. Does not give trample. Hmm. See what other creatures are in the deck. I think it's mostly just a lot of clones. Only the Siege Rhino is going to have trample. Uh, I think we Eternal Witness and blow the board. <laughs> I think is what we have to do right here. So I guess we do some attacks first. Because we can't win in one fell swoop, and this is so much value. No blocks from our opponent. They are at 42. Takes the damage, goes down to 32. Boros Charm is in their graveyard, I just confirmed. Get the Eternal Witness. Get back Austere Command. Use the ability. Put Wild Growth on this land. Play the Austere Command. I think it's going to be... What do we need? Can't hit Balin. Tatiova's a big creature. That's a small creature. Big creature. Small creature. Big creature. Two Tatiovas. Small creatures. Mm, man, I really want to get rid of the Tatiovas. A card It's pretty good. But Oracle gives them extra lands. They have an Eternal Witness coming back. They have a Seasons Pass in their graveyard. They have an Evacuation. Yeah, they got some annoying stuff in their graveyard. Yeah, big creatures, Oracle. Duh. Yeah, okay, so big creatures and artifacts. Uh, we are left with an Eternal Witness and a Reclamation Sage. Opponents got birds and Bloom Tender. Balan still sticking around along with the Dark Steel Plate. Those are indestructible. Uh, anything else we can do? I don't think so. We've got three open mana. Yeah, I think we're passing like that. One thing Mono White is missing is a Boros Charm type of effect for all of your permanents. It has Teferi's Protection, which is one, but it really needs like a White White Protect All of Your Stuff. Uh, brought Back is okay. I've been seeing that here and there. Um, but like when someone's going to lay down board wipes at the rate that I like to lay them down, Mono White really could use just like a, a white, white, protect all of your permanents type of card, uh, in addition to Teferi's Protection, uh, and hopefully one that is also a bit cheaper than Teferi's Protection, because it is super expensive. Uh, alright, there's the Haste, and there's a Sword of War and Peace. This could be mildly threatening. Where does Dave want to send it? Open, I think. Does he have Trample? Yeah, we're open, so he probably comes our way. It's going to be some life loss. No, I'm going the other way. The birds can block. Does not have trample. Eh, just not going to block with the birds. All right. It's a lot. Nope, nope. Going to block with... Yeah, going to block with the birds. Of course. Going to play a Horizon Chimera. Okay. Comes down with flash. The birds go down. Opponent gains a life. Here comes Eternal Witness. Let's see what this gets. Going to get the Helm of the Host. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good one. Put it on the Eternal Witness. Get more stuff. Seems like a play. Opponent's down to 33 now, though, uh, after the attack we sent into him, which is getting closer to Siege Rhino right of replication range. Yep, here comes the Helm of the Host. Opponent's still got a bunch of mana tapped up. Gonna equip the Eternal Witness. Yep. Ooh, that's in a Dark Gar Valkyrie. That's a good one. Fortunately, does not have haste yet. And the Wayward Swordtooth, back to play. Helm of the Host trigger, gonna get another Eternal Witness. Let's see what it gets back. Get back Tatiova. Okay. 
and send an eternal witness into Dave? Sure. That's a cloud shift. Uh, that does improve the amount of damage that we can do. Also opens up some other options with these lovely ETB creatures. Um, yep, let's get the Karma Guide. Karma Guide, get Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino trigger. We have eight mana left currently, which is one short of the right of, right of replication with Kicker. So we're going to have to sit on the Etherize, sit on the Cloud Shift. Can't really afford to do anything else in this moment. Guess we can attack Dave for two. Down to 44 he goes, and we will pass the turn like that. Dave going to swing our way. Uh, yup. Do we care? I think it's okay as long as nothing comes down. We're going to lose like 20 life, which is a bit. But I'm actually more worried about this army over here. So I think we just take it. It's going to be 10 commander and 10 war and peace damage. Down to 24 we go. 10 commander. He has no blockers, so I wonder if he has a follow-up plan here. He's got land and one card in hand. Pretty open to the uh, to the K and T player, but he is at 48. So unless there's like a big overrun type of effect, he can take a hit and survive. Here comes the signet. No, they're helm of the host trigger. Eternal witness. Yep, all seems like a problem. Goes for Boros Charm. Okay. <laughs> Was worried he can go for evacuation. Evacuation would mess us up. Boros Charm slightly more manageable. Gonna send a few things over to Dave. Okay. He goes down to 35. Here comes Tatiova back to play. Moves the Helm of the Host over to Tatiova. Brings it back to our turn. Not going to pay the Echo cost on Karmic Guide. Let that one go. We draw land. Lands are good. Play the land. Cast Rite of Replication with Kicker on our Siege Rhino. We have many Siege Rhinos. Get five Siege Rhino triggers. Opponent's life totals finally into a normal range. 20 and 16. Uh, we go back up to 39. Okay, we're relatively safe. Okay. I was getting worried about a big crack back. But I think we're okay with the Etherize. Uh, I'm not going to go... Does it make sense to attack right here? I don't think we need to attack right here. Eh, maybe we should. Maybe we should. In a normal game, that would probably kill at least one player, but everyone's been getting so much life this game. Also, all the bounce uh, has stopped Valen from being as aggro as it normally would be. So, Down to 16 he goes. Both opponents at 16. We can actually take this hit right here. It's not going to be great. Uh, it'll get us for what, like 18 more probably? But it'll put us to 20 commander as long as it doesn't get pumped by anything. We actually survive, and I'd rather stay on this uh, etherize right here. Because I'm actually more worried about uh, K&T doing something big. An overrun effect could be really bad. So we're going to go to 20 commander. Down to 21 life, so cut our life total in half. But I think for everything that's going on, firing Etherize off against the K and T, I think will be more of a headache to them than it will be to Balan, because Balan doesn't have like other things to do at this moment. They just they're in top deck mode, so opponent's gonna preemptively Boros Charm. Okay. Oh, then they're gonna blasphemous act. Alright. Uh so we're not gonna be able to win the game right here. Uh so we should probably cloud shift on Eternal Witness. Get back Karmic Guide. Seems like a thing that we should do. So Cloud Shift on Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness, get back Karmic Guide. Use the ability. Karmic Guide back to hand. Blasphemous Act will resolve. Opponent's creatures survive. And uh, Balance survives. So we're the only one getting hit by that Blasphemous Act, which is unfortunate. Good news is opponent tapped up all their, tapped up all their mana, so if we bounce them, then uh, they're not going to be able to recast anything this turn. They'll probably have to discard a hand size. Oh, this looks like an X spell. Could be bad. Could be bad. Uh, they're going to populate 11 times. Okay, there are worse things. Oh, it's all on Eternal Witness? Yep, going to get themselves 11 Eternal Witness triggers. Do they have a max hand size? They do not. They have a Reliquary Tower. Uh, all right, all right. Now, if they went slightly less into the X spell, they could have gotten Teamer Ascendancy and given all these haste. Evacuation coming back, Birds of Paradise, Team Resendency, yep. Probably Blasphemous Act. Yep, Boros Charm, Blasphemous Act, so they have another one-sided board wipe if they need. Won't lie to you, we're in some trouble here. Uh, we can't really fend off both opponents super well. Helm of the Host Trigger, get another Tatiova. See where opponent wants to attack. Uh, everything available into Dave. Okay, I don't, uh, haven't done the math here. Don't know if he'll survive or not. Comeuppance would be hilarious. 
Opponent says that should be exactly 20. You got 4, 7, 12, 16, 18, 21, I'm counting. So Dave's going to go down to combat damage. This is lethal on him. He has no answers. So down he goes. Uh, question is to etherize at the end of combat right here. Another etherize means that those are Eternal Witness tokens. That's the original Eternal Witness, which means they can do it again, which I would love for them to stop doing. But it does get rid of a lot of stuff. On the other hand, they don't know about etherize yet. Anything we do, they'll probably try to do the Blasphemous Act Boros Charm thing again. Always some potential of counter magic. Oh, it's a tough spot to be. Uh, they do have the team of Ascendancy, so they can replay this stuff with haste. Yeah, maybe it's worth just holding the Aether Eyes since it doesn't get all of their stuff right here. They have no max hand size, so they literally just cast it all again next turn. It does keep them from doing other stuff, but uh, I don't know. We know they're probably going to Blasphemous Act again. All right, here comes, here comes the lands and the life gain. Uh, Bloom Tender is up, so they can Boros Charm again. So Austere Command, probably not going to help. Oh, yep. Yeah. Ooh. Multiple Tatiovas. Yeah, this is bad. Brings it back to our turn. There's a Yavamaya Hollow. We can regenerate our Siege Rhino. Um, might be the thing that we need to do. Play the Hollow. Need to make sure we have enough mana to do everything. So we'll need five for the Karmic Guide. We'll need one more for the Yavamaya Hollow right there. And then we've got four for Aether Eyes. So I think that's where we need to be. Karmic Guide. Get Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino back to play. Three to our opponent. We gain three. Opponent draws a card, gains a life, plays a land, gains a bunch more life. Whew. So much life gain. Soul Rain coming down, yep. Here comes Teamer Ascendancy, yep. Here comes Sun Titan, yep. Looks like just Thought Vessel. Thought Vessel or Land are the options. Opponent gets a draw with Teamer Ascendancy, yep. Opponent did get that evacuation back, by the way. It's something to watch out for. Looks like they tapped out all their blue, though. Another X spell coming. The Populate one from earlier. Yep, gonna populate 20 times. Opponent doesn't have much in their graveyard, so Eternal Witness probably doesn't make that much sense, but... Uh, there's an Eternal Witness. Gonna get themselves some more Eternal Witness Eye. Yep, get back everything in their graveyard. Yep, opponent's gonna Boros Charm. No Blasphemous Act this time. Helm of the Host Trigger. And I mean, this is the power of Aetherize. We've been sitting on this for what, like five turns, making sure we don't die? Really, really strong card. Opponent gonna send everything just like we hoped. Sun Titan will trigger. The question is, uh, how do we keep getting this Aetherize back to our hand? Punch Tatiova triggers. Horizon Chimera triggers. Opponent's up to 35 life. Gross. Try this Aetherize. Hope no counterspell. Everything getting bounced. We are alive for the time being. Don't know how we're getting the Aether Eyes back, though. And I was thinking that maybe we should have just, like, been between Karmic Eye to Eternal Witness repeatedly and try to keep Aether Eyesing, but uh, the Team Ascendancy is a real problem because opponent can cast everything with haste again. See if there's any other creatures that pull things out of the graveyard. Does not look like it. Opponent's going to play an Enlightened Tutor, sure. Gets Merit Lage's Slumber. Oh, yeah. Soon we'll have a Merit Lage staring us down. Signet, Sterling Grove, opponent didn't play any blockers. They have two green mana open. I hope it's not a fog. However, if we finale X10, clone the... Actually, do we even need to do that? All right, let's make sure we have enough mana. So if we finale X10, we'll need 12 right there. Oh, that would be 12 mana. And we would need five to keep the Karmic Guide alive. That's 17. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We're too short. We'd have to catch an ancient tomb, mana crypt, something like that. What if we went? What if we let the karmic guide go? Get a creature, let's say a copy of Siege Rhino, because that would get us three extra damage. And then those both have plus ten, plus ten. Or actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We can go X13. So 13 plus 4 is 17. That would be exactly 34 if we let the Karmic Guide go. Yeah, uh, we got to try it. We don't have anything else. 
not paying for the karmic guide divining top just gonna lay it all out there right here uh one thing to consider maybe leaving two mana up for what's it called the soul bond guy dead eye navigator dead eye navigator is a five five so if dead eye navigator is getting dead eye navigator will get plus 11 five plus 11 is 16 and siege gang would be four plus 11 is 15 uh that puts us to the exact same place damage wise so i think i'm just gonna go for it this way finale x13 opponents tapping up their mana get a heroic intervention that's fine think this means we can win oh i got nervous for a second i've never cast finale says graveyard or library i think we're gonna go with the library right here yeah i think dead eye navigator is our best bet soul bond with the siege gang rhino with the siege rhino attack with both hope this gets through and it worked oh my god it worked <laughs> oh my god oh that was so much stuff for our opponent if they play even one blocker then none of that works wow <laughs> oh my god oh whew. that was a close one <laughs> so arbitrary rhinos uh, like I said, I added some removal to the deck between games, and you saw just how valuable the Etherize was. For some reason, the zoom button's not working again. Uh, let's see if we can do something about that. There we go. So, yeah, you saw just how valuable a single Etherize can be. And uh, I added a Wrath of God in there. That came in handy at one point. Added an Hour of Revelation. Didn't see that one. But, in combi but combined with the Austere Command, we actually had a lot of removal. And we were able to answer what our opponents were doing at the right time. And squeak our way to victory past all odds. Because things were not looking great for a period of time in that game. So, yeah, I think this deck just needs more interaction. When you think about the concept of this deck, from what we saw, it's not particularly fast. Like, you're not a deck that's going to win the game in six, seven turns, probably. So, you need the game to go longer. That's going to be playing multiple board wipes. You've got Ravos, which is great for going late. You can keep getting stuff back. So, if I were going to tailor this deck, I would really tailor this deck to be heavy, heavy board wipes. Slow the game down, bring the game to your pace, and uh, make it so that you can eventually get there with the Siege Rhinos. So... Uh, but other than that, I really like the amount of ramp in the deck. The ramp was pretty good. Maybe needs like an Oracle of Moldiah, something that like really kind of generates a lot of value if it stays alive for a while. But I also like the amount of like tutors and ways to bring back the Siege Rhino. So like you always have an option to get it back should something happen to it. I guess resiliency. Resiliency is probably the right term. Um, just, you know, your ability to find Siege Rhino and always have something kind of in the tank to grab it when you need it. Uh, like I said, I got rid of Raised Dead. I got rid of the Noxious Revival those type of cards just because if you're going to do that you might as well just get like an animate dead and just bring it straight to place so you don't have to worry about the mana cost overall i think the deck looks pretty good the combo and a lot of the things surrounding it look all look very very good i think it's just that little tweak of a bit more removal being able to protect yourself against stuff a bit more but other than that i really liked it i thought it was a fun deck and uh really surprising that i was able to sneak that one out uh one thing that i was seeing cloudstone curio may actually be too slow uh, like, I know it's a cute combo trick, but usually when you see it, it's in, like, Animar or, like, Edgar Markov, where everything costs one mana. With all the stuff costing three and four mana, I don't know how much you can actually realistically bounce a Siege Rhino at that mana cost, especially without mana doubling. And that might be a thing, too. Zendikar Resurgent or Mirari's Wake might be uh, really helpful for this deck. Get some mana doubling in there. Um, but yeah, without those, Cloudstone Curio, I think, just is too mana intense to be able to do that. Where Deadeye Navigator is the same idea, but much more mana efficient. Um, so I definitely like that line of play a lot better. Although it is Deadeye Navigator, and people don't have a lot of love for Deadeye Navigator. It's been ending games for a long time, so... Yeah, uh, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.